Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, today we are going to study the book of Jude, the epistle of Jude from the King James Version Bible. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord Jesus Christ, lead us and guide us. Yes, thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have given us right now. Be with us. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of Jude, the fight, contend, do battle. When apostasy arises, when false teachers emerge, when the truth of God is attacked, it is time to fight for the faith. Yes, beloved, let us have faith in God, for faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, as we read in Romans chapter 10. The author of Jude, in spite of its limited subject matter and size, Jude was accepted as authentic and quoted by early church fathers. They may be some older allusions, but undisputed references to this epistle appear in the last quarter of the second century. It was included in the Muratorian Canon AD, CAD 170 and accepted as part of the scripture by early leaders such as Tertullian and Origen. Nevertheless, doubts arose concerning the place of Jude in the canon because of its use of the Apocrypha. It was disputed book in some parts of the church, but it eventually won universal recognition. The author identifies himself as a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, verse 1. This designation combines with the reference in verse 17 to the apostles, makes it unlikely that this is Apostle Jude, called Judas the son of James, in Luke chapter 6, verse 16, and in Acts 1, verse 13. This leaves the traditional view that Jude was one of the Lord's brothers, called Judas in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, and Mark 6, verse 3. See the author of James as we see as we studied the book of James. His older brothers, that is the James, note his position on the two lists, was famous leader of Jerusalem church. Yes, Acts 15, verse 13 to 21, an author of the epistle that bears his name, like his brothers, Jude, did not believe in Jesus before the resurrection, John chapter 7, verses 1 to 9, and Acts chapter 1, verse 14. The only other biblical allusion to him is in 1 John and 1 Corinthians 9, verse 5, where it is recorded that the brothers of the Lord also took their wives along on the missionary journey. The Judeas of Acts 15 chapter was 22 and 32 may be another reference to him. The extra biblical tradition add nothing to our limited knowledge of Jude. Yes, beloved, as we see, the only other biblical allusion to him is in the first John, as we see in first Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5. Yes, where it is recorded that the brothers of the Lord took their wives along on their missionary journey. Yes, the time of Jude, Jude's general address does not mark out any particular circle of readers and there are no geographical restrictions. Neither, yes, he probably had in mind in a specific region. Nevertheless, yes, he probably had in mind a specific region that was being troubled by false teachers. There is no enough information in the epistle to settle the questions of whether his readers were predominantly Jewish or Gentile Christians. There is probably a mixture of both. In any case, the progress of the faith in their region was threatened by a number of apostles who rejected Christ in particular 
particular practice and also the principle. These proud Christian in practice and principles. Yes, as we see in any case, the progress of faith in their region was threatened by a number of apostasies who rejected Christ in practice and principle. These proud libertines were especially dangerous because of their deceptive flattery, verse 16, and infiltration of Christian meetings, verses 12. They perverted the grace of God, verse 4, and caused division in the church, verse 19. Jude's description of these heretics is remind reminiscent of that found that is found in second peter and leads to the issue of relationship between the two epistles as we see the author of second peter the strong similarity between second peter chapter 2 verse 1 and 3 was we see in 4 and jude 4 verse 18 can hardly be coincidental but the equally obvious but the equally obvious differences rule out that possibility the also the possibility that one is a mere copy of the other it is also doubtful that both authors independently drew from an unknown third source so the two remaining options are that peter used jude or jude used peter both views have their advocates and a number of arguments have been raised in support of either side. But the two arguments for the priority of Second Peter are so strong that they tip the scales in favor of this position. A comparison of two books shows that Second Peter anticipates the future rise of apostate teachers second peter chapter 2 verse 1 and chapter 2 and 3 verse 3 while jude records as the historical fulfillment of peter's words jude chapter 4 11 and 12 and 17 and 18 yes and second jude directly quotes second peter chapter 3 verse 3 and acknowledges it is a question from the apostles that is 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 and 2 Timothy 3 verse 1. Because of the silence of New Testament and tradition concerning Jude's later years, we cannot know. We cannot know where this epistle was written, nor is there any way to be certain of its date. Assuming the priority of 2 Peter, that is AD 64 to 66, the probable range is AD 66 to 80. Jude's silence concerning the destruction of Jerusalem does not prove that he wrote this letter before AD 70. Yes, the third, as we see, point is the Christ of Jude. In contrast to those who stand condemned by the liciousness and denial of Christ, verse 4, the believer is preserved in Jesus Christ, verse 1. Jude tells his readers to keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, verse 21. But at the same time, the Lord is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verses 24. Now, as we study the survey of Jude, a surprisingly large number of Pauline and non Pauline epistles confront the problems of false teachers, and almost all of them allude to it. But Jude goes beyond all other New Testament epistles in its relentless and passionate denunciation of the apostate teachers who have crept in unnoticed with the exception of its salutation verses 1 and 2 and doxology verses 24 and 25 
the entire epistle revolves around the alarming problem combining the theme of second peter with the style of james jude is potent in spite of its brevity this urgent letter has four major sections and purpose of jude verses 1 to 4 the description of false teachers verses 5 to 16 defense against false teachers verses 17 to 23 and doxology of jude verses 24 to 25 the purpose of jude as we see in verse 1 to 4 jude addresses his letter to believers who are called sanctified and preserved and wishes for them the three fold blessing of mercy peace and love verses 1 and 2 grim news about the enroachment of the false teachers in the churches has impelled you to put aside his commentary on salvation to write this timely word of rebuke and warning verses 3 and 4 in view of apostates who turn the grace of our god into lasciviousness and deny christ it is crucial and believers contend earnestly for the faith description of false teachers verses 5 to 16 jude begins his extended expose of the apostate teachers by illustrating their ultimate doom with three examples of divine judgment from the pentor tech verses 5 to 7 like unreasoning animals these apostates are ruled by the things they revile and they are destroyed by the things they practice verses 8 to 10 even the archangels michael is called careful in his dealings with superhuman powers than are these arrogant men he compares these men to three spiritually rebellious men from genesis cain and numbers balam and kora who incurred the condemnation of god verse 11 verses 12 and 13 succinctly summarize their character with five highly descriptive metaphors taken from nature after affirming the judgment of god upon such ungodly men with a quote of non canonical book of enoch verses 14 and 15 Jude catalogs some of these practices verses 16 as we study the further description in the book of Jude there is the defense against false teachers as we see in verse 17 to 23 this letter has been exposing apostate teachers verses 8 10 12 14 14 and 16 but now Jude directly addresses his readers but you beloved remember verse 17 he reminds them of the apostolic warnings that such men would come verses 17 to 19 and encourages them to protect themselves against the onslaught of apostasy verses 20 and 21 the readers must become mature in their own faith so that they will be able to rescue their those who are enticed or already ensnared by error as we see in verse 22 and 23 the doxology of jude verses 24 and 25 jude closes with one of the greatest doxologies in the bible it emphasizes the power of christ to keep those who trust in him from being overthrown by error yes beloved as we see the outline of jude The first is the purpose of Jude, second is the description of false teachers, the third is the defense against false teachers, and the fourth is doxology of Jude. Yes, as we see there is the purpose, the description of false teachers, that is the past judgment of false teachers, the present characteristics of false teachers, and also the future judgment of false teachers, and in defense against false teachers and the fourth is doxology of jude let us always read the word of god get the wisdom and also the understanding and grow in the word of god as was as there's only one chapter in jude and verse 25 it says to god a savior 
who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for evermore. Amen. Yes, beloved, let us be blessed as we read, when we read the Bible, and one who hears, one who reads, both of them are blessed, as we read in Revelation chapter 1, yes, verse 3. So, let us be blessed, and also, we will get a lot of guidance and encouragement, and also, Jesus Christ speaks to us as we read the word of God. For the word is life, the word is spirit, John 6, verse 63. Yes, the word is truth. Yes, it is truth and it is living word. And he is the omnipotent God who reigns. Hallelujah. As we read in Revelation 19, verse 6. Yes, beloved, he has all power and authority. As we read in Matthew chapter 28. And even the evil spirits and demon shudder in the name of Yeshua Messiah. We have everything. Let us grab this opportunity and be in the presence of our living God. Yes, Jesus Christ loves you and me. Yes, for God has loved each one of us as God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Yeshu Messiah, on the cross for us, that whosoever believeth should not perish but have eternal life. Yes, John 3.16. Yes, beloved. Let us receive the peace, the joy, abundance of blessings, let there be showers of blessings in your life and my life. As we read in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26. Yes, beloved. So we bless it today and every day. Yes, Jesus Christ loves each one of us. Yes, do like and subscribe the channel. Arise and shine, Alfred Rathod and Family USA. This is Dr. Mrs. Alfred James Rathod speaking for the channel as Jesus Christ has called me for the purpose of speaking the word. Yes, I'm here in a service. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, verse 15. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this time. Yes, and the word says, God bless you. Number 6, verse 24. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.